Welcome to the My Name is Human or 2.io podcast brought to you by MyNameIsHumanPod.com. I am Human Hazy. I am Human Kanky. And I am Human Snoke. And we have a very special guest today, Kwaku Austin, a world-renowned photographer. Welcome to the show, Kwaku. Hello. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Great. We're, we're excited to have you. We have a bunch of questions to ask you, but we're just going to start out with your background a little bit. You're, you're a photographer. We, we've seen your website. We've seen your Instagram. We've seen a lot of your work. How did you, get your, how did you start your career as a photographer? Well, uh, well I, I pretty much was always into art when I was growing up. And I think it was around high school I really fell in love with photography. My uh, uncle passed away, unfortunately, and he left mm. my mother his camera. And I was tinkering around with the camera one day, broke into her closet and tinkering around with it. And I ended up breaking one of the lenses. <laughs> so uh, from then on, my mother said, either you're going to buy a new lens or pretty much take a photography class. So I took a photography class. <laughs> I fell in love with it in high school and then pursued it. Well, could you tell us a little bit about you know, going from your, your first photography class to you know, kind of the level that you're at now. I'm sure the story is very long, but can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> 30 about years you... of a story. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, but... Yeah, I mean, it was one of those things. It's like you just have to follow your heart. And anything you do in the world, you really have to just have faith in yourself and put yourself in situations where you can learn, you can uh, find mentors and educate yourself. So I went to school for photography and uh, advertising at the Rochester Institute of Technology in upstate New York. And after that, I moved to uh, New York City and just with $500 and just hit the pavement and lived on the floor and did everything I could to show my work around. So I pretty much hustled for a good two or three years, working for newspapers, different magazines, smaller magazines, doing a lot of hip hop and had a few great breaks because hip hop in the 90s was like a huge thing with Puffy, Biggie, <laughs> Tupac. And I got very lucky in shooting a few different artists that became very famous like Lauren Hill, Wyclef. Oh, nice. Wow. And then I started transitioning into Hollywood stuff. So I was also shooting some lesser known celebrities and it just spiraled down, just start spiraled up from there. It just kept happening. That and is awesome. Some years later, I, uh, I don't know. It's, it's very surreal sometimes the people I get to meet that I interact, interact with. So for me, it's, uh, it's, I'm just loving this journey. It's amazing. I couldn't ask for more in my life. It's, I mean, besides my children and my, my family, but it's uh, doing what you love in life and waking up every day, and it's always a new, fun adventure. There's nothing better than that, except Earth 2. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny that you say that because I kind of want to ask, you know, uh, we will definitely talk about your photography because, I mean, it, it's it, like Kangi and Hazy both said, it's amazing work. But um, what kind of... Uh, like, how did you hear about Earth 2? Wow, you know, I, you know, I don't, it's so strange. I was thinking about this. Um, I'm really into, I've always been into real estate. I've always been into art and video and different things. And I was really, into, I was really a gamer when I was younger. Um, that's a different story. We'll go into that later. <laughs> but, um, Definitely. Ever since I turned to thir in my 30s, I, in my career picked up, I didn't have time to sit around with my boys and hang out and play video games. You just play Grand Theft Auto all the time. Ah, yes. <laughs> but um, it, it, it really, sorry, I just forgot the question almost. Um, what's the question? Oh, oh how <laughs> you first got introduced to Earth 2, I think. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. so basically, I was, um, it, it was the beginning of the year, like maybe mid-January. Um, there was just all this rush about NFTs. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm an artist. I have to get on this NFT stuff. I can, I can t finally take advantage of my archive. I have thousands of photographs. And I have other friends who were doing pretty well in the NFT space. So I started Googling and then I came upon um, a person mentioning uh, about NFTs and then she segued into virtual real estate. I think it was either a Bloomberg special or something like that. And I'm like virtual real estate. And I, she was talking about the central land and all the stuff during the pandemic and how it, it was blowing up. And I'm like, oh, wow. So I started getting into the central lands and then I started Googling more. I went down that black hole of <laughs> videos and other things. And I found earth too. This is around, I guess this is the beginning of, I think a late Mar middle March, April. I think I was really starting to get into it. And I bought my first property in April. Um, 
And I was a little nervous at first. I was really trying to go into the central land because it seemed like I already had a, a, a game happening, things happening, people were already there, it was already populated. But the buy-in was so expensive. Mm-hmm. And one of my good friends, uh, Dennis Thamopoulos, he's a cartoonist. He has a cartoon brand, and we were talking about it. And I showed him Earth 2, and he was like, oh, this thing's pretty cool. And we liked the idea that we kind of could, we knew place. I travel a lot. I travel through my job. I travel all over the world. So I, I'm like, oh, this is great. It's kind of like I can, like monopoly of the world kind of thing. So we got into it together. We bought properties next to each other in Greece. Like if we get older, we can hang out in, in Greece in our virtual estates. And then it just just went up from there and I kind of got addicted to it for a little bit and like everyone else I think does just because of the proposition of what it what it can what it could be right and um that's how it started just by so that was probably your first thoughts and what made you decide to put money into the platform was the vision that or two kind of uh portrays that they're going to have in the future would you say that's a correct statement yeah you know there was this yeah exactly that's yeah that also, I mean, I wrote down this quote. There was this um, podcaster or someone, he doesn't do anything anymore as begin- in January. Uh, I forgot his name, but he had a quote. He said, this, I was like, why do I play this game? Because I kind of consider that we're playing it right now. And he said, we play, why we play the game? He said, because we want to play a game which is somewhat fair and you will be rewarded for your creative, creative contributions and vision of a better life. You get what you put in. You mm-hmm. are the creator of Earth 2. I really think that sums it up for me because this was a, a chance of rebirth. I mean, I bought real estate in, you know, Venice Beach and other parts of California, and I've seen how much real estate, is, how valued it, it is. I've seen my parents, how much they had to go through and renting versus buying and all this other stuff through my lifetime. And I, I don't know, it just, it just grabbed me. I gravitated towards it because I knew that, hey, I think this is something that has value. I mean, virtual, I mean, anything, NFTs, we're like, why are people going to buy a copy of something? It's because it's an original. It's tied to the blockchain, whatever reason they come up with. But as an artist, for me, this is a great place for me, not just for the virtual real estate and ownership, but it's really about me putting out an experience for other people and somehow tying my photography career into it, setting up virtual gallery spaces to display my NFTs and stuff like that. And as far as the game thing, I think it's really about... um, this is the first time I've ever seen that you can own part of the game without being an investor in the company. So I thought that was pretty cool for my kids. Great, great. So before we move on to the next question, I, I kind of want to touch on that, um, what you were talking about displaying your art. Is that kind of the vision you have of the things you're going to do in Earth 2 is have uh, virtual galleries of your photography, of, of things, your NFTs, things like that? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's certain projects I have for, you know, the, the, one, of my, one of my first projects I thought of was pretty much redoing the photo district, photo district in New York. When I moved to New York City in the 90s, there was a, a photo district. It was like seven blocks, five blocks wide, seven blo- avenues over, three avenues over or something. But it was, uh, it was nice because all the photographers knew, all the studios were there, all the photography resources there were there, and we would just all meet up there. And that kind of, through gentrification, New York changing, that's kind of gone away. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to create a virtual photo world within New York City around, say, ICP or something. So I started buying property because I wanted to make galleries and have spaces for studios or event spaces. And I was trying to get other photographers to come into this space and we can kind of own this. And then we all have, we all have connections with sponsorships in the real world. So mm-hmm. you can tell the real world, hey, uh, blah, 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 Leica or Aerie why don't you do a uh, tutorial or something here, rent the space out and sponsor an artist, and then we can help build that for them. So I was kind of looking at it as another way of a business, another segue for another income stream, pretty much. Oh, that's amazing. I, yeah. I, and I know that, that Shane is probably going to watch this, and I think he's going to fall in love with that idea and concept. I think that's kind of the, the thing he envisions or to being about people having – their own spaces, their own little worlds, but also bringing people into those worlds. And I think that vision that you have and, and the collaboration you want to do, with us, that's the kind of thing I love. I love going to art galleries. I love being, being able to look at very creative things. I'm a writer at heart. So for me, it's the written word, but I, I also admire the, the visual. So that's really, really exciting. All right, Snoke, what's your question? 
Well, I actually think it was uh, Kangi, but yeah. uh... <laughs> go ahead, Kangi. No. Yeah, yeah. No, it's... Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. My bad. I... No, no, no worries. I, I was going to ask, since we were on the topic of some of the places that you were interested in in Earth 2, what was the very first property you bought? Was it one of those locations in Greece you had mentioned? Uh, that was my second property. <laughs> oh, okay. I bought my, I, um, I bought my house. Ah, uh, that's always <laughs> good. <laughs> I tried to buy all my houses I ever owned in my life. <laughs> cause I that's pretty them. cool. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I bought my house, and uh, I bought, like, a couple of tiles there, and I told my neighbor to buy it. My, uh, my next-door neighbor act, actually is a video game developer, Telltale Games. And he's, oh, he's, really? Yeah, Jamie uh, Otterby. He's one of my – we're, like, we both have kids, and we all – sit around drinking beer after work on the street and hanging out. Yeah. And we never talk really business with his friends. And then I, I didn't just found out he was a video game developer. And I told him about this. So he bought some land next to oh. he bought his house. And, you know, he goes, these are highly speculative things. Don't get too crazy about it. You know, yeah. <laughs> but, you know he was there really, to, you know, I talked to him about it this weekend. He goes, look, it takes three to four years to do a game. Oh, yeah. Right. So just be patient. And if it works out, it works out. If not, be prepared to lose what you can afford. That's it. That's the, that's the end of the thing. That's all it is for me. Well, you'll have to tell them that I, I think I bought every single Telltale game. That Same here. Those games are very fun to play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, him and I were thinking about doing a, uh, some kind of VR studio together or something. And so we were oh, first, wow. we really want to figure out how to implement technology into the game that we want to you know create spaces for. And it's I just, you know, it seems like it's, could be a, it's a long play and it's, it is, it's a long play and, and there's nothing I'm, you know, I've been around the world, been around life long enough to know that you have to plant seeds and if you plant good seeds and you water them, they will grow. So for me, you know, it's, I, I'm my son and I are looking at the map together. It's a good way for him to understand geography. He's eight years old. And I'm like, yo, you're into my, you're into Minecraft. He's so into that game. And I can see this being a transition for him. So I don't, I'm just going to let him build. He builds incredible things in Minecraft. So for me, this is a great way for us to come together and be on that level and, and play. Love it. Computer. Absolutely love it. Definitely. And I know, so you talked about your art gallery. You talked a little bit about your son uh, being able to transition from Minecraft into this as well. Like what other projects are you doing within Earth 2? Um, or w w more like, what are you looking to accomplish within Earth 2? Well, there's a, there's a few things. It's really about me having a place to display my art, one. Two, a place for my, you know, it's a legacy project for me so I can have, you know, my build projects that my son can build and he can have some type of revenue stream if he creates a cool game. He's into coding. So he oh, might wow. do something cool like that. But I'm really, and my daughter too, because she's four, but I have spaces I bought for her as well. And I, and I also thought, I love the idea of um, just creating great experiences. Like I have, I bought, this sounds crazy, <laughs> but I mean, I bought, you know, I'm in the, I love Hawaii. That's one of my favorite places in the world. So um, I'm not a surfer, but I live in a surfing community in LA. So I understand, so I've been around a lot of surfers. I'm like, you know, I've been the pipeline in Hawaii. It's incredible waves. I went to their, their competition. So I'm looking on a map and of course it's pretty much all taken. Um, but I thought about maybe buying the top 10 surf breaks around the world. I thought that would be a really good acquisition, something that you can have, have some type of value on and you can set up some type of, um, tournament or some type of event where you can live stream from there in the game to the actual event, but you have to make partnership deals and licensing deals, which I can do because I work in an industry. So I, I, I know, I know how to, I'm two, I'm three people away from the person I need to talk to usually. That's been nice. working in this industry. So that's been really cool. So I talked to a couple people about that. But I was lucky I finally got some pipeline property. I'm really happy with that. Nice. Nice. <laughs> so so you sent us some notes earlier before we started this show and you talk about a few you talked about the pipeline and the New York City photo district. You also talk about some things I found very interesting. And so I want to go one by one through these and kind of get your mm -hmm. your ideals behind them. So the ninja temple dojo in Japan. Explain to me what you're seeing there. Uh, well, you know, I'm, you know, all the great properties that, I mean, I wanted the pyramids. I wanted, there's so many great things that I, I you know, Stonehenge, uh, Angkor Wat, um, uh, 
uh, Bora Bordor. I thought no one would know what that is, and that's been taken. So I didn't get into the game when it was tense in that tile, or I would have had all that stuff. You know? <laughs> crazy. It would have been over. You and me or, both, brother. You know, yeah. yelling at me, but, you know, but, uh, but I definitely, you know, I've been thinking about more obscure spaces that have potential to create experiences within or at least lease it back to those regular people. <laughs> I don't know, lease it back to them, maybe a partnership with them and say, I have a space, it represents this. I know, I was, I was really shocked when they said they were going to wipe off all the existing buildings in the game. I was like, why are they going to do that? That's the whole but thing. But actually, for, for someone like you, that's a great thing. Yeah. Because can, you, you can be more creative than the average Joe. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's great. It's good. I'm happy to doing that. Cause there's no legal issues. You just, you know, I love the idea of people are talking about augmented reality where they can see something that's there today, but what's in the virtual space. I think that's a very smart play. Um, that's a nice bridge between VR, but um, I, I think the ninja, the ninja temple, cause I was, I, I, I don't want to give it away, but I really <laughs> wanted the Shadowing temple. That was my dream property. And I, I check it every week and see if he's selling it. And not, he's not selling it. <laughs> yeah. have, have you ever tried to place a bit, a bit on it? Uh, I, yeah, but I don't keep like $20,000 in my account. <laughs> <laughs> True, <TJ. laughs> it, has, it has like $100 in there right now. That's about it. But um, that's what I wanted to do against like, my father's in the martial arts. I thought it'd be kind of cool to recreate a JoJo and that, you know, something like that. So I typed in ninjutsu and it came up. Ninja Ninjaro Temple in Japan, and I started looking around. And Japan's really hard to navigate because just the streets are so crazy how they structure them. But I found it and I bought it, and I'm really happy that you know I would love to build like a, a ninjutsu or some type of experience or something within that environment. It could be a place for people just to go meditate, you know, or because I think with the pandemic, what we've noticed was everyone's locked in their house. And yeah. get out and having some, if you can get out for, let me, well, basically, if you can get into this game or get into, if it, we do become like Star Trek one day where we have a hollow deck or we have this VR, which is in the future, because when I was growing up, the cell phone was, no one thought about the cell phone. That was the tricorder from Star Trek, you know? So I do think it's going to get there one day. Um, I work in a lot, I work with a lot of technology companies. I see things and I'm like, wow, I, I, that is not consumer level. So everything is possible. We just have to be patient, you know, be patient and put positive energy around it, I think. But yeah, for sure. I want to build some type of experience that deals with physical you know, meditation. Yeah, and then I think the other one you mentioned was the Hindu monastery in Kauai. Mm -hmm. And the, this one I'm actually not familiar with the Seva Siddhanta mediation experience. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, that, that's, uh, there's two different ones. I didn't, I've been there a few times. We go there every time we go to Kauai. Uh, it's just a, a, mon it's a beautiful monastery. I'm like, what? I mean, I wanted to buy property in Hawaii just for, if I retire there, I wanted to have virtual properties that I can kind of create businesses off of. And um, that was something that wasn't taken, so I started buying it. But, you know, at $50 or what I was buying it at, that's a lot of money per tile. So, um, I couldn't buy the whole property, but I bought the structure itself, <laughs> my <laughs> tiles. And the other one was a guru that came there in the 60s or 70s. He, had a, he called, created a love temple. So I thought that would be kind of cool to play off that and do a love temple or something like a Osho or something. Uh, Speaking my language with, with my hotel chain. <laughs> yeah, 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 something a little bit more adult. <laughs> <laughs> so the last one I want to touch on before we move on, um, the – the love Ananda Mahal. What is that's that? The love temple. That's the one that's next oh, okay. to this one. So that I mean, I haven't been that been to that one at all. But I I've just seen pictures, and when I was searching around the map, I found it because I'm always going between this map and Google Map and one other map. I'm always going back and forth, and I discovered that one. So I just sent him this pick that up at the same time, and I bought a few other properties in Kauai. Right. Nice. All right. That's awesome. Uh, that's a way more involved developed strategy than I have. I have yeah. a strategy. <laughs> but that that is just so impressive to me that you thought through all of that, pick particular plots that match up and align with the strategy you have. So oh, yeah, that's that's amazing. So what I do want to ask next is, what are you <laughs> most hopeful about with Earth Two? That. That what's happening right now within the, uh, the YouTube sphere, whatever you guys call it, um, 
I hope they don't get discouraged. And I, I think, you know, I have a lot of friends, you know, they're video game developers and they are, they are artists, you know, they definitely, they see differently. So I hope they don't get discouraged because I, I feel they could be. And I think they have to, I think, you know, they maybe just need to have a little bit more community outreach in terms of just being more vocal. And I mean, they can't, you can't rush this stuff. They're, this is they're they're recreating the will. They can't you can't rush it. It's kind of like it takes time. And I think the community has to be patient as well. Yeah, and but, I th- um, I think the problem is the community. Uh, this generation is all about what can you do for me now, and they don't they don't like to wait. And I think people like I'm going to call myself out along with you. We're a little bit older. We 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 see that and we realize that you know. The saying Rome wasn't built in a day is going to apply to Earth too. It's something that people just need to hold the relax a little, let their breath out, and just let it happen in increments. And we've talked about this before on the show. Yep. Let things happen naturally. Do phase two, part part one, part two, part. Don't try to sh- sh- get it all done in one year because then it's going to be a broken product and it's going to break the game. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you 100% on that because, you know, patience, I've learned patience. That's something I've always struggled with. But, you know, like I go back to planting, it's about planting seeds. I bought, you know, you buy real estate, you buy this, you buy certain things because you think they're going to go up in value or because you know they'll be good for you in the long run. So from education to whatever it is, um, I've just been, I turned 50 this year. So never put that on. <laughs> but I, I really, uh, it's all about, planting as many seeds these next three or four years. So they're fruitful when I'm in my sixties. So if this doesn't happen until I'm, you know, 60 years old, I'm cool with that. It happens. And I'm an early adopter of it. And it's great. It's like Bitcoin. People were, right. I, you know, I have friends who were doing Bitcoin back in 2013, 14. And I laughed at them and, you know, but then people laughed at me when they, I invested in Google when I was younger, I, they were like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, this is this new thing. I'm into the internet, you know, whatever. So are, there's always going to be naysayers and you have to learn how to filter a lot of that out. And cause if you're not, if you can't filter that stuff out, then you know, you won't ever move forward. So you have to trust in yourself, trust in your heart. And when I, when I saw, um, it's not, it's not Nathan, it's uh, Shane. He was talking about, you know, I couldn't, you know, when he said, I don't like using the word scam cause I don't like that word. Um, but you know, he said, it's not a scam. I have my reputation. My, I have two boys or three boys. And that, that's what hit me because for me, I'm like, Oh shit. Yeah. I sometimes forget. I can kind of, what happens to me can affect my children. So yeah. I yep. don't want to put any bad rap on them too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, being a crazy artist is one thing, but you know, ripping people off is a totally different thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> especially, on, especially on this scale. Yeah, yeah, on the scale. These kids are gonna have that's just that will be his kids' legacy. So I yeah. kind of feel like, wow, you know, that touched me and that gave me, you know, new hope in the game. So yeah, I, I did think, slow down on playing a little bit. Yeah, it's it's definitely an easy thing for somebody on the internet to sign that check on somebody else's behalf. Like yeah. you commit twenty years worth of wire fraud. You know, I don't know that that's something Shane is signing up for. To your point, that that's the legacy that he wants to you know, leave to his, his kids, nor do I think it's, it's the one that he's doing, but we've, we've talked a lot about, you know, sort of the negative side of YouTube and content creators. Are there any, you know, earth two related content creators that you follow that, you know, are maybe a little bit more positive and optimistic about, about the future of the, the product? You know, the most optimistic person out there I've noticed so far, and there are, I've watched them all. I watched them all because I was trying to get in. I, I needed to understand how to play the game because it was about, do I need to go get gold? Do I need to get wood? Do I need to get this? And I'm, <laughs> I'm scrambling, looking around the, ro- you know, the globe and Googling for minerals. And I'm into that stuff. So I invest in all that. So I'm into it. But um, I, it was that, that Randy Chavez. Yeah, I, I knew yeah. that. <laughs> Shout out to Randy Chavez. He's, he's, you know, he's ex-vet. My dad's ex-vet, all this stuff. But it's kind of like, it's one of those things where, he seemed honest and he seemed hopeful. And to me, I don't know if, it, you know, he is what he is and he's great. I like, I listen to him. It's like, it's like, a, it's like talking to your friend. That's what I feel like with him. Right. But who I really gravitated to towards was uh, that Earth 2 meta. Ah, uh, Dave, that's, a, that's yeah, our buddy. 
Yeah. I really, I really thought he was doing a, a, a good production job. I mean, that, that's high value production he was giving us. And there's no doubt about that. And he's going to love to hear, he's going to love that you said that. So thank you. Yeah. He, <laughs> he's there. And I just feel, I just feel bad that he's not on anymore. And I don't know. I just, it's just horrible that people can come out and say things about people on the internet and all that. And, and it's, it just shuts people down. And that's why we can't get, get move forward in life. It's just, well, so and like we were talking about earlier, the reason, I mean, what, Cole and I know Meta pretty good. Uh, Kangy, sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> and the reason he shut down was because it was affecting his personal life. And when it crossed that line, he just needed to take a break. Okay. It was like, and so that's all it is. He he's a uh, he's still around. He's still watching from the from the sidelines, from behind the curtain, so to speak. And he's still active on Twitter, also. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think once Phase Two kicks kicks out, uh, we might see more of him again. Okay. Yeah, maybe waiting the storm out a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I agree on that. You know, it's awesome that you shouted those content creators out because you know, I mean, there are a lot of them out there, and all of them are good. And um, now, within the Earth Two community itself, like, what involvement would you like to have within the Earth Two community? You know, that's, you know, it, it hmm. for me, it's really about, I, I just, I, it's a good question. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm just going to make, I'm just going to try to make some type of experiences and produce something that I can leave behind for my children. Like um, involvement in the community. I don't want to do a podcast. I don't want to be on YouTube. <laughs> <that much. Totally laughs> I'm very, I keep it really below the radar to get my job done because yeah, I don't it, need any fame. It, 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 it need took us over time. a month. It took us over a month to get you on the podcast. So I, the struggle was real. People are busy. <laughs> really? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm like working all the time. You know? I know. Right? No, no. I totally get so that. <laughs> yeah, no, you guys are. You know, you, I didn't mean like that, but you know, I just feel like. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, uh, it's we funny, don't travel the world and take pictures of celebrities so. know, or presidents <laughs> yeah <laughs> bit easier on my end yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah you know this but here's the thing you have to understand this is such a welcomed um just something that gets my mind off my job nice but then it's turning into my job and i'm i spent many nights just looking at that map and just <laughs> there first. but and, you know where you know you know where naru is now Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, flag I know where so many crazy places are. I'm like, oh my god, and and like this whole Alpha Kingdom. Yes. Yeah, Alpha Kingdom seems like they're 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 pretty strong. I mean, I I see a lot of things come and go in terms of people not really promoting their stuff as much, but it seems like Alpha Kingdom they have their uh, their they're a force. And uh, you, you just made shout nameless. out Alpha Kingdom. <laughs> you just made nameless and tech ops day. Yeah, oh, okay. very <laughs> strong brand. I, don't know I, I think I'm in that one part of their kingdom, but I didn't really. I'm still learning how to use Discord and all that. I I watch right. things on it, but I don't really participate. Um, I don't use Facebook. I mean, if I work for them, I don't use them because <laughs> I <laughs> don't have. I have my studio manager sometimes puts things up. It's just too much being out there Definitely. for me. Um, but I guess there's a lot of great producers out there. I mean, I, for me, the best thing about it is just the participation in the community. I think yeah. that's we'll go back to answer your question. I really just want to participate in something groundbreaking on the on the ground level with my children and help build something with them. And um, you know what legacy and this but I really love how, you know, at first everyone's gravitating towards the big cities and this and that, but the idea of building a new city somewhere mm -hmm. out of the blue, mm -hmm. that's a new concept for humanity. It really yeah. is. Where all these people come together and go, We're gonna swarm over to Antarctica and we're gonna put a city there. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's that's no one does that. And, yeah. and this game is, is creating new ways of thinking, which I love. And, and I've said for the longest time that the thing that's keeping Earth 2 alive right now is the community. The fact that they can get past the negativity and see the potential and see the positivity. But, and and but now I, real I, quick, I got to say, I love how you are bringing in your family into this as well, because that, that's amazing. <laughs> Well, you know, I have to, yeah, I don't like it. My sons are that Minecraft a lot, and I, I feel bad about pulling them away because I grew up with, like, Atari, and I, my parents never took me off the computer. I was always on it. So I kind of thought this would be a great way for us to, you know, relate, and he can learn a skill, and he can have something that he's part of building with his father and my daughter. It's just great. I just love the fact that it would be something that, 
taking a look. If it, you know, it has to, I mean, I was listening to your pod, your, your podcast on the Republic investing. Great podcast, by the way, that was probably one of the best. I don't, it needs to get out there more. I, I love that one. Yeah. That's and our favorite. He was, he was talking about before this one. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about the Dow or creating a fund for Earth two. And I think that's something that I would like to see happen with the developers to say, Hey, we are thinking about the future because if this is going to succeed, it's going to be like Facebook. It's going to be like Google. It's going to be for 20, 30, 40. It's just going to be forever. It's going to be infinite. If it's successful, it's like Coca-Cola has been around for how many years? So it's the same thing. If it works, it will work. And that's not going anywhere. So I would like to see them somehow um, have plans for phase five, six, seven, what's going to happen in the future and how we can keep it going so we can all benefit from this. So that makes it seem like the, the crypto, the blockchain, and the NFT assets is a big part of what you think or 2 needs to do to succeed. Am I reading that right? Well, I, I won't lie to you. I did buy some mana, uh, or mana, how you pronounce it. I did buy that because I was going to buy into I'm still going to buy into Central Land. I think I'm going to invest. I'm just investing. Just going to put it in there and see what happens and have my son build it. Um, but I, you know, everyone's been talking about them having a blockchain or, I mean, having a crypto and stuff like that. I mean, I would be nice. I, I like crypto. I'm not going to lie here. I enjoy it. Um, but I'm not sure it's necessary, but how else are we going to pay? How else are we going right. to pay? create money, create an economy? I think it's important for the economy. Okay. This is the most important question of the podcast. <laughs> Do you have Scarlett Johansson's phone number and how many tiles would it take to get it from you asking for a friend? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have Scarlett Johansson's phone number, no. But you took pictures of her and I'm jealous. Oh, she's a wonderful spirit. She's a really good spirit. So, yeah, I don't have it. Yeah, her. that was just a joke, obviously. <laughs> just a joke, obviously. Just, I love my pyramid. wife. To, I love my wife for the, to the pyramid. Death. For the pyramids? Uh, yeah, I'll get the pyramids. Uh, I'll get the phone number for the pyramids. <laughs> all right. Sorry, honey. <laughs> You'll have to do some trading of Caesar's Palace and whatnot. Hey, yeah. go figure yeah, it out. I, I own Caesar's Palace, so I'm like halfway to the pyramid. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Caesar's Palace. That's a good one. I like yeah. that place. That's fun. So one thing I wanted to, to ask you about was the Kwaku shop. I was looking through it, and I was thinking that, that it's a really forward thinking idea in terms of offering both your own sort of artwork as well as your like personal items or items that are important to you or that are inspiring to you. Um, I just wanted to ask a little bit about how you came up with that idea in the first place. Good question. Um, well, the Quacky Shop, I'm re we're actually revamping it because we're going to include NFTs. So um, that's, I'm trying to somehow, you know, merge and you have this, some type of space that can be about the photography and also people can come there if they want digital assets as well. So um, I don't know. I was always into collecting. I am, I'm a hoarder. Okay, I'm a hoarder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what you mean. <laughs> I, I have a lot of camera junk. I have, a you know, not junk, but, you know, things that are photography industry artifacts, I would say. And um I thought it'd be kind of cool to put it up on my shop. And I'm, I have so many, I just have to photograph them. I just think it's cool. It's just something fun. It's just something more than just photography. It's just about the lifestyle of a photographer. I think I try to, part of my brand is showing us, showing people what I go through, showing people what the real photo experience is like, because it's not all glamorous. I miss many planes. I get, you know, many things happen where you show up places and your, your celebrity doesn't show up for three or four hours or it doesn't show up at all or something happens hmm. and, so it's not super glamorous all the time, but, you know. So, so you mentioned the NFT aspect. What kind of things are you looking to mint as NFTs? What, what, what kind of items are you, are you looking to mint? Right now I have, um, I have some NFTs up. I have about maybe four or five, uh, not maybe four or five, but three, four, three different series. I have one of Volkswagen vans. I have one, uh, something called Mississippi Walking. Uh, it's a juke joint kind of like blues inspired photo. Uh, I just did a collaboration with uh, Philippe Cousteau and Dub, DJ Dubfire. Yeah, I saw your, your Instagram on that. Yeah, we just did that. And that's the first collaboration I did. I think I really like collaborating in the NFT space with other artists that I'm friends with. Someone might throw in a track. I'm also a filmmaker. So someone might, you know, do something, a, you know, a track or some famous person might speak on it or someone might write something. So I've kind of... Um, 
I have like a few other projects that are in the works right now with other photographers, other creators, and we're just just putting it out there. I, I have to. Just, it's like planting seeds. That's all it is. It's just planting seeds because if say for instance, you know, one day one of my projects hits and it becomes all over Google, that means everything that hopefully will spawn other cells and other part of my products, you know? So that's kind of how I look at it. I just put it out there and it's it really, it's there for my kids and my family, part of the legacy. It's fun. I know I'm just doing it. No, we love it. It gives yeah, me something definitely. to do with my Ethereum. <laughs> I, I did like that you brought up that the nft connection and relationship to the shop though because it the kwaku shop inherently kind of felt like a more personalized you know consumer experience for lack of a better term like it was a more sort of direct to, with the artist sort of experience so i think that's another thing that you know nft sort of offer is that that more direct relationship between the artist and the person that's that's ultimately buying it yeah, I think that I love NFTs because it's not, it doesn't have to be a standalone. It could be the, the final product plus the process, details of the process to get to that product that people, they want to know about. If I'm buying a piece of art, like, I'm, you know, I have, I have a show right now at the Leica Gallery. And wow. what people want most, they want to talk to the artist. They want mm-hmm. to understand what they're thinking about. And they want to feel like they're part of the process or part of their community. So it's really important if, you, if you're creating art, I think it's important to remember that you're, you are creating a community. So it's kind of like Earth 2. I'm, whatever I'm going to create, I'm sure people are going to come to because I'll create something really cool. You know? so, and <laughs> Absolutely. It's, community, it's for a community. Mm-hmm. You know, after this podcast, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to go look at your work. And, you know, seeing um, people that you have photographed, uh, photographed like Barack Obama, LeBron James, uh, Sierra, Serena Williams, Tiger Woods, Kane Brown, Scarlett Johansson, many, many more. Are you ever starstruck by these celebrities that you uh, photo- uh, ph- photograph? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I have been a few times, but I can't, I'm at the point where I just don't, I don't, I don't even watch TV. I, I can't be around entertainment too much. <laughs> all right. I, I, I see all the fake, I see all the you know, I see the layers. I see, I, have, I see the optics that are used to focus and your mind goes there. That's what I do. I, I kind of, that's why I have Visual Thinker as my, uh, my what do you call it, screen name or something. But um, yeah, it's hard because every time you watch a TV show or you, you see, oh, I shot there. Oh, I know where that is. And you know what's been put into it. You know the production value. And with the celebrities, you know, there is, um, there are people. So I don't really, I, I have been starstruck maybe three times. And it was, you know, it, that was younger though. Now I just treat people exactly the same. I go in there. Well, now, nice now, now we have to ask who were the three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't, you know, it's a little, oh, that's a good one. Maybe two or three times. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I would definitely, let me see, let me see who, who, I think Coretta Scott King was someone I was a little oh. bit nervous around because, you know, all the history and stuff behind that um, and what she represents to American culture. And she's an icon, so I didn't want to mess it up. Yeah, Muhammad for sure. Ali. Oh, wow. Wow. And I, and I photographed him many, a few times, maybe four or five times. So, you know, I grew up, you know, oh, my God. You know, I'm oh, not, I, grew, I, I grew up loving Muhammad Ali. So. Yeah, and, and you meet him and then you're like, whoa. And then. That's cool. And you, you have to, sometimes you can get into um, fanboy mode, which I, <laughs> when I was in my 20s, I got, I got into fanboy mode a couple of times. And um, that wasn't good. So I learned very quickly, you can't be fanboy. No. You're there to do a job. And I just yeah. do my job. Right. And get it done and do it the best I can do it. And that's what they keep calling back for. I don't try to be friends. I, don't, I have a few friends, but I don't really yeah. try to cross that line anymore. As someone who's worked as a as a regular journalist, not the photojournalist, I, I totally understand and relate to that. You can't be friends with people that you might write something about. Uh, you have to be objective. And yeah. I think it's the same with photojournalism. Yeah. It's very interesting because I didn't know that going into it because you're like, oh my, because you, I was starting in hip hop. 
And I was so excited because I used to watch all these hip hop, you know, MTV raps and you mm-hmm. know, raps, all this stuff. And you're finally there in front of me, you're like, you you just you're all hyper and just want to talk to them. You're like, ah, and they're like, no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. So it, you know, I, I calm down a lot. I'm just very chill and just. Well, this, this is kind of a good transition to our next question. Can you talk about the favorite person you've had the chance to photograph, as well as the your favorite moment you captured from behind the lens? Oh, favorite person <laughs> to photograph. Uh, I don't know. That's a good one. Um, I don't have a favorite. I won't lie to you. I don't have I've been, no, it's very, recently, fair. Okay, I did have someone I photographed recently, and it was Eddie Murphy. Oh, I, I saw that, that on your profile. And we're in a pandemic, and they were, coming, they were doing Coming to America, too. And I was supposed to shoot him in Atlanta, and then the pandemic happened, and everything, all the production shut down. So another shoot came up like four or five months later for a magazine cover. And they, want you, they said, we want you to shoot Eddie Murphy and his daughter. I'm like, where, where? They go, at his house. I'm like, oh, this is great. I'm going to shoot him at his house and do all this great stuff. And they're like, well, you can't be there. And I'm like, what? <laughs> this is exactly the same time I was into the Earth 2 thing, started the Earth 2. And they're like, we're going to do a virtual shoot. I'm like, virtual shoot, virtual property, virtual shoot, virtual property. And it hit me. And I was super excited about it figuring out how to make a virtual shoot happen. So yeah, how did you make that happen? Well, it's just, there's multiple ways you can do it. But what we ended up doing was we, we set up a computer system there, a, a digital system, cameras. And we ha- I set up, I had the lights position. I did a lighting diagram and set the lights up. Someone would set the lights up, sent everything over to his house. And we had his uh, fiance and his daughter hold the camera and just oh. position it. And I said, you know, just try to, I pretty much was like a, like a director in their ear going, move back, move forward. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. You're doing great. Just breathe. <laughs> that is <laughs> awesome, so though. Uh, that's, I mean, that's interesting. <laughs> I uh, love your, I love your cup. I just saw your coffee cup. Oh, yeah. My, uh, McDowell's. My... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, one thing I wanted to ask you about, we've talked a lot about um, some of the like high profile commercial work that you've done, but you've also engaged in personal projects like the Venice Project. Um, can, you, can you talk about how many photographs you get to take that are just for you as the client as opposed to somebody else? Wow. Uh, I've... You know, it, it varies year to year, but I, 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 it's so important to all. It took me you know, at least 10 years to realize that doing commercial work is wonderful. It pays the bills, but that's not why I entered photography. I entered photography because I wanted to create images for whatever reason. There's a lot of, it goes every two years, it changes all the time, but I want to do my personal work. So I've always stuck to doing my personal work. Sometimes I don't even show it to people. I have so much I don't even show people. I just do it for myself because it's part of the practice. So I'm really into like Malcolm Gladwell. He's like 10,000 hours. He did uh, the Tipping Point, Outliers Mm -hmm. books. And he talks about 10,000 hours to make you an expert on something. I definitely got a million hours into this thing. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe not a million. I mean, I have more than 10,000. But it's really about the practice of doing it over and over and over again that helps you become great when you're at work. So doing the personal projects inspire me to inspire me for work. So when I do my Venice project, it was, you know, I was photographing everything from Volkswagen vans to bringing people off the streets into the studio and doing eight by 10 portraits of them, or just doing street photography, photojournalism. So it it was just varied. That gave, that was kind of like my, my, um, my therapy. It doesn't it's mean to get away from the commercial, the guys of the practice of being glamorous and all that, because there's so much that goes into making these images of famous people. It's a, I have a team behind me. There's retouching. There's art directors, other people's visions. And I have to bring all these people together. It's like a small band to whatever part of the world they want it to be to create something beautiful so they can shoot it all over the world in the media. So that's a job. That's a little bit different. So when I'm going back to basics and doing the personal work, it, it pretty much recharges your, it recharges your uh, soul, your creative soul. And as artists, I don't care what kind of artist you are, what you do, you have to recharge your soul because you can't go into, if you do the same job every day and you're not doing anything for yourself, you're going to be upset. Like for you guys, this is like your love. 
you guys are having a good time. So it's enjoyable. So I try right. to make sure my job, I'm, and people feel that. They feel it on set. They feel it. They, they know if you're just phoning it in. They know. So I, oh, yeah. I'm ha- I take pictures every day, and it, it's just my practice. Oh, and it's funny you speak of that. Last week we didn't do a podcast because we just felt like, we would have phoned it in and we just, did, <laughs> we, we didn't want to, we didn't want to do that because we, we do love doing this. And yep. so we were like, you know what, we just need to take a break and enjoy, enjoy our week off and, and catch a breath. And we're back here having a great time today. So sometimes you just got to take a little breather. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I, I did want to ask also, and sorry, Snoke, I think I'm taking your question here, but how did you first hear of NFTs or the concept of artwork being sold as an NFT? And, and you mentioned some listings that you have right now, but have, have you sold an NFT? And if so, what was the first one that you sold? I do have, I do. I, you know, I'm, you know, I, <laughs> I, I first heard about it back in, I guess, December, like end of year when everyone heard about the, the Beeble, the big, you know, Oh, right. The huge sale. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, wow. So I started researching and I knew about things like um, there's something called Silent Step 7C, some website where everyone, the new digital artists were sell, selling their work. And I kind of got into it and I kind of got out of it. And then and a, a year later, NFTs became really, you know, hot on the news. So that's kind of how I found out about it. And I started researching open seas and different like Rarible and Nifty 50 foundation so i started applying to different ones different exchanges different groups and that's how i started and i do have an offer for i do have a really a low 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 offer for my video (laughs) and we're trying to raise money (laughs) so um but it's cool you know i'm learning and it's this is something that it's so hard trying to figure out how to price your stuff and how to uh how many the quantity because it's digital you just have to think about it a little bit differently and it's all um, trial and error of a lot of it. I mean, I'm, I have someone who helps me put it together and put it out there. So I hope that answers your question. So I got to ask real quick, do, do you have any uh, Earth 2 NFTs? No. No, I'd be bad up to you guys. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. You know, it's, um, I mean, I, I do like the, the, the bowl combo. I like, I watch him. That's the guy's yes. the bowl combo. And like, another great yep. guy. Yeah, I like what he has to say. Um, there's a few other people. Uh, but I know he had an NFT. He's giving them away, and it's like kind of like a, it looks like a trophy. I would do something, you know, a little, I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know about making NFT, but I might. You never know. Yeah, we, we have some of those, too, but we're kind of holding on to them <laughs> for when we're when – we're, when Earth 2 has like 10 million users, and yep. they're actually <laughs> worth something. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Another thing, I think that it needs to be more. Um, I don't know what the demographics are. I, mean, I would like to see the demographics on our. So I can tell you what they are for our podcast. Like male versus female, and all it's that. It's definitely male, male dominated. Mm-hmm. Uh, about ninety percent male, and I would say the average age is above thirty. Okay. Uh, Cole and Cody are a little bit different. They're right at that, <laughs> right at that threshold. Yep. But. Uh, and but that's our audience. I think uh, like on TikTok, you're going to have a younger audience. So I think on YouTube and especially on Apple, Apple podcast, the audience is definitely older. The average age for that might be 40. Uh, so let's uh, transition from that. Uh, so something I think interesting where you can tie your professional work with your Earth 2 work is, you know, where some of the most scenic places in the world are. You've, you've taken pictures all over the world. So what would you rate as your top three locations for scenic photos and locations that you would still like to maybe explore as a photographer or even on Earth too? You know, that could be a business. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, you know, I really into certain, like the Great Wall of China, certain spots of that. The Forbidden City, I think it'll be a beautiful shot because it's, it's rare get that shot um uh christ redeemer in uh rio de janeiro that's a beautiful view beautiful view uh, i've done that uh hmm a few i i got a place in argentina not argentina it was uh paraguay underneath there's some beautiful like mountains down there i thought it was a really 
great shot to do a photo workshop there virtually. Um, yeah, I think that could be cool. I haven't really thought about it that deeply in terms of places to shoot. But I, now that you got me thinking about it, my, my well, head's spinning. Yeah, I mean, you could like, you could almost do a service for Earth 2 players. Hey, I would love to see like a real photo of my property. And you could do like maybe make an NFT. I'm just spitballing here off the top of my head. I didn't even think about it until you said something. <laughs> but you could kind of almost do something like that. Like if you're at a location, take a, take photos while you're there and maybe uh, send them to and say, hey, I have uh, the Great Wall of China here. If you want a up close personal view, you could like do something personal. You know, that's interesting. You said that I, um, I thought about like, for instance, you know, this whole pipeline thing, the whole that whole beach, that's a beautiful stretch of beach in North Shore, Hawaii. And, you know, I photographed there. I photographed Pipeline, the surfers there before for a magazine. I was doing Kelly Slater and Andy Irons before he passed away. When he won, I actually photographed that championship. And I photographed, I was walking around just taking pictures of the beach and the different houses because I love architecture. And uh, I thought about, I was like, man, it'd be great if you can just take the shot of the area that you are envisioning to build something in or someone might have built something in and try to figure out how to market that somehow, some way. I'm not sure how to work that space, but I do think there is something there that could be explored. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. But uh, I definitely, there's certain, uh, it's hard because, you know, the photography in this Earth too, it's like, where is it going to go? We don't know where it's going to go. So are they going to let us build whatever we want to build on our 30 by 30 meter lot? Is that so what I really, this, I thought it would be like Burning Man. Yeah, so this is, totally not a, <laughs> this is totally not a scripted question, but it's just something I thought about. Once we have way down the road, we get to the virtual reality phase. Can you see a part where you can actually go in and take uh, virtual reality photographs of people's creations and maybe market that? I think you could. I definitely think that I think there will be it's kind of that it will happen. Yeah. I'm hoping if, if you build the if they allow us, because it's really about it's really their intellectual property, that game engine. So whatever space they build, if I if they someone or if you built, for instance, you know, the new Caesar's Palace that's like three times bigger or whatever it is, yeah. And I take a picture of that. Yeah, I mean, it could be marketing marketing photos that you take for for because I'm not very I'm not good at photography. I would just hit Windows print screen and be like, "Up, oh, there's my picture." <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure how the virtual. I'm not. You know, this is all speculation, and I'm hoping that they, you know, will be able to bring this into fruition and make something that's just so great. But you know, anything's possible. Yeah, anything's possible. So I think going back to the beginning, it's really about giving these developers extreme, you know, positive vibes from all its players, all the community. 100%. That's what we have to do. And we have to, because, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. It wasn't built by one person. You know, everyone laughed at like, you know, I don't, I'm not, not very many people remember this, but I remember when, you know, Apple was cool and then all of a sudden it was terrible. And then mm -hmm. no one, they sold their stuff to power computing and they were putting out fake Macs and, and then their stock was horrible. And then all of a sudden Steve Jobs came back and he rebuilt that, that brand. So anything is possible in this space if you have the talent, the dedication, the team, the team leadership, and just the positive energy to do something great. That's how we've gotten to the moon. That's how we've done a lot of things. It's really about the will. And we can, it, come on, I mean, this is not something that's not doable. It can happen. Yeah. Agreed. Absolutely. Well, we're, we're down to our last like few questions here. So this is my last question. I have to ask about this. Can you talk a little bit about the Volks live in works because they're mm -hmm. super cool. And also just a uh, uh, food for thought. This was my sort of joke question, but have you ever thought about contacting Gabriel Iglesias to sell him your prints directly? Because He's down in Long Beach. He's a comedian. He's got like three million dollars worth of V-Dub buses. I, didn't know I think that. he's like your target audience. So. Oh, you have to send me his information. I was. I, I, yeah, I th or at least uh, the his planned Volkswagen bus museum uh, oh. slash a place. I think it's one of his his houses. But yeah, it's got like twenty or or thirty. 
I mean, they're they're more mint condition buses. I don't think that these are really the lived in variety as much. But but that said, they are they are uh, pretty impressive. So, but, but your photos definitely caught my attention, and I was curious what made you think to take photos of you know, the Volkswagen bus life. That's my my hippie bohemian soul coming out in those photos. <laughs> you know, I was living in um, Venice Beach. I moved from New York City to Venice Beach to escape the hustle and bustle a little bit. And I would just ride my bike around Venice Beach all the time. And I kept seeing these Volkswagen, bu- Volkswagen uh, buses. The 70s, I was really into the 70s versions at first. And then I'm kind of into the Vanagon 80s, and 90, early 90s. But I started seeing them all over the place. And I just started shooting them. After a couple of years of seeing them, I said, let me take a couple pictures. And I started shooting them the same exact direction, one, one vantage point. And then... Whenever I was riding my bike, I was depressed or anything was going on that I felt bad about or I needed, I needed a sign from God or needed something from the universe, I would see a Volkswagen bus. <laughs> and I knew I was on the right path. I got it, man. Yeah. So, I, I mean, so I just I have like hundreds of them. And I was going to do a book. You know, I just didn't. I got busy working. <laughs> you know? I have a lot of projects to get out there. And so we did do, we have like maybe 20 or 30 of them in NFTs. And we have given, we have two that, going back to your question, we did sell two of them. Oh, oh nice. nice. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my Kwaku shop back up again. And then I, that's my goal for the end of summer. And then we're going to be, then I'm going to, I'm going to hire someone just to promote that because I can't do it all. Very nice. Yeah. That's awesome. And, you know, I have one last question as well. Um, I know we kind of talked about this a little bit, but like in the virtual world, have you ever taken any type of um, photos in the virtual world, like in a virtual experience or a virtual game or anything of that nature? No, I, I no. was wondering if I could have done it in maybe one of, one of those, like, I don't think you could do it in Grand Theft Auto. I'm thinking about not Sleep for Cell. It was another game I was playing, Metal Gear. I'm not sure we had did it. No, we couldn't do it in that. No, I haven't. No. <laughs> what what do you think oh go ahead oh no go ahead snoke <laughs> so I, I know there's a couple games out there um and this is more related to pokemon i don't know if you've heard of pokemon or not but uh <laughs> pokemon came out with a new game well it's an older game but they re- re-released it called pokemon snap where they actually take photographs of pokemon out in the wild That's um cool. how do you th- kind of think that would kind of like correlate to earth 2 and or in the virtual world in general I mean, it's it's different because you know the the really inter- It's like you know you have two different camps. You have this gamer camp, and then you have this camp that's into technology and virtual worlds and all that. And my son plays Pokemon. He plays okay. into it. And that Randy Chavez guy's into it. He always <laughs> yeah. that he is. Like, yes, like, indeed. I wish I bought some. I could have afforded that back in the day. <laughs> you know, and now they're millions of dollars and. Then you see uh, Logan Paul, or what is his name? The guy who's boxing a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah Logan, Logan Paul with the yeah, he had Charizard a necklace. Pokemon card. And I'm like, oh my God, that's the same thing as Bitcoin. If you bought it, like, you know, if, you, if you were lucky enough to buy it five or six years ago or when it was nothing, $300, $100, whatever it was, you, you would have done well. So I think that I do see a space for gaming in virtual worlds for sure because we want to do something there. And I think the games have to be community based. Because you don't want to sit in a virtual room, a virtual world by yourself playing a video game. I want to do experiences with other people. So if it is like a Pokemon and people are running around looking for something, I think that could be kind of interesting. A little bit more strategy to that. Um, but that's not, that's not why I'm here. I'm not, I'm yeah. not really, I'm worried about, I'm more about creating businesses and creating something visual for people to leave behind and to enjoy it and be part of a, a you know a new community. Um, that's about it. You know? That's awesome. That's great. So this is going to be the last question before we wrap things up. Tell us a little about about projects you're currently working on, and any charities you might currently be working with. Uh, maybe we can spread the love and uh, get some people to chip in some money to your favorite charities. Uh, well, we well. well Right now, we're at the chair. Let's do charities first because I'm under a lot of NDAs. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. My, my life is NDA life. Let's put it that way. Indian screen name, NDA life. <laughs> um, but yeah, and the, um, recently, the NFT with Dubfire and Philippe Cousteau, that was going, the money's going to Earth Echo. So that's one charity I'm, I'm 
kind of doing things for right and just created a project for uh another thing i the venice let me see what i do a few other things um but that's the one right now what's the what's the one you're most passionate about oh it all depends i mean the one i i I, it it changes i mean charities go come and go for me I, i i'm always donating work to charities that's how it's one way i get my work out there like the black aids black aids institute um there's um you know a lot of different things i i design a cure i mean i can the top of my head thinking i've done so many i just give things sell prints we try to raise money through selling prints or giving and, photo shoots well i know personally i've really enjoyed you being here uh you sharing your background your experiences your vision of her too um snoke you have anything you want to ask kwaku before we wrap up you know again I, I can't thank you enough for being on the show it was a great honor to speaking with you and learning more about you and everything that you do so uh, thank you again oh thank you thank you I appreciate can you it. no nothing else from me i just really appreciate you being on and uh looking looking forward to working with you in the earth 2 world hopefully here soon <laughs> And is there anything you want to promote, Kwaku? Uh, anything we can link in our show notes for you? Uh, they can promote Kwaku Shop. I think it, it's okay. definitely the Kwaku Shop. And uh, my, my blog is Art of Studio. Art of Studio. Okay. Can, if people want to see a behind-the-scenes commercial photography lifestyle, I think that's kind of where you stay. And how, how would they get there? It's artofstudio.com. Art. Artofstudio.com. Okay, yeah. great. So what I wanted to wrap up with before we leave, uh, something you sent to us, it, it touched me personally. And I just kind of want to talk about it. And it's what you said, what you really thought about Earth 2. And it was a place for us to connect and create together. Leaving then part of my legacy within the game. A great way to create a time capsule and leave part of my life in the digital form for them to visit whenever they want. And I think those are beautiful words, and that's a perfect way to wrap up the show. Hazy out. Kangi out. No count. Thank you. Walk well out. Thank you. Appreciate it. Much love. Get up off your knees, girl. Get up. Stand face to face with your girl.